Hi Church, welcome to our new Faith Fridays where we talk about everyday life in light of faith. And just now when I mentioned new, we have a new face, new look and also a new production team that has rise up to actually help us think and to look into the different aspect of our production on our Faith Fridays. And because of that, we are very excited when we encourage you to join us every Friday from now onwards, whether you're watching this alone with your family or even with your connect group, all right? So we strongly encourage you, stick with us and join us every Friday. Now, with that said, today is actually at the start of our new series. We call it, How Are You Really? But before we start our series and we uh, for today, we would like to take some time to show you the result of the survey that we asked you to participate in last week, all right? Do get ready and let's dive right in. So, according to the results of the survey that was done last week during our last Faith Friday, there were 54 respondents all together. So, just want to say thank you to all those who did respond and did help us do this survey. And I just want to run through with you some of the survey results so that we are all are able to know um, what is the accumulated result. So, the first question asks about our personal relationship with God in this season and where do we all generally feel we are. And the result came back to 3.6. If you see the chart, 3.6 out of 5. So most people actually feel generally positive about their relationship with God um, um, above average, we would say. The second question actually talks about how we have grown in God during this crisis and i find it really uh, encouraging to see the results as you can see in a the chart there are various areas that people have grown but i'm going to focus on this three area 70 percent of you have become more appreciative of his providence and his presence in their lives 70 percent 60 percent said that they have learn to become personally responsible for their own walk with God. Wow, that has been really encouraging as a pastor to hear that, that we have grew, people have grown to take their own responsibility. 57% of you said that you have become more aware of His working and what He is doing around you, the people and the situations around you, to be able to see God's hands in those things. So this has been quite encouraging to hear. Now, the third question actually asks about what are the things that have actually helped build your faith during this time? Now, according to the survey results, 67% of you said that it is by reading the Bible more that you have actually grown in your own faith, 67%. And the other three, three areas that uh, a lot of people have felt has helped, uh, also 57% shared out across, is de having devotional materials or reading other devotional materials, uh, checking out sermons or teachings on other websites. And I'm also really glad to hear that because there's so much materials all across the globe, everywhere online. And to be able to access those things is a privilege of our generation. Another 57% also said to that uh, they have grown in their faith just by talking to God more, just by praying more. And that is so amazing, so amazing to hear. Now, our next question actually wanted to check on how many of you actually follow and engage all our Agape online services. And the result came back to 77% of the time that there was a lot that was following or engagement of our services. So we also want to say thank you. I want to encourage you to continue to engage, continue to uh, log in, continue to follow those times. And we have so many exciting things planned ahead. So tune in this Sunday for Pastor Ben's message and remember to continue to engage with each other as well. The next question actually checks on our interest or your interest in taking online Bible studies, online seminars. Now, according to the survey, 62% says they are either extremely interested or very interested. And that is so encouraging to us. Hint, hint, Esther Tan that this is something that we are going to launch into as well to do a few more Bible studies or seminars online for as much as, as long as we can. Um, next question actually asks about uh, how many people prefer to be in a small group in order to connect or to engage within. 
And it is an 84% staggering yes, they would love to or you would love to. And so I just want to take this time to encourage you to connect with your uh, connect group. Even if it's WhatsApp, even if it's a bit awkward for us or not being able to meet, but now that we are able to meet up a little bit more, to take that effort personally, proactively to connect with your connect group and grow together. You know, the last question actually asked for suggestions of topics of what uh, you might like to hear through Faith Fridays. And I just want to let you know that it has been amazing to be able to see so many unique topics. There was not a single repeated topics in the suggestion. Some gave more than one, three, five, even seven topics in a, in a row. And, and it's amazing to see the the grandeur and the mass of interest in different topics and the many variety of it to this. So we will do our best and we will try to engage in relevant topics that we can talk about that will help us grow in our faith. Again, Faith Friday is about engaging with our everyday life in the light of faith. So once again, thank you for taking the survey. All right, church, we are truly excited over the findings of uh, the survey. And based on this survey, we will continue to make our Faith Fridays more relevant and better for you. And with that said, we want to introduce a new segment called Let's Talk, where we will actually meet up with a few of our church members just to see how they are doing. Hi, everyone. My name is Sue, and I'm currently pursuing my degree in Arts and Social Sciences, finishing end of the year. Uh, I've been around church since birth, serving in various ministries, and I'm really glad to be here with all of you today. Hi everyone, my name is Zian, and I've been in this church all my life. I'm also one of the children church worship leaders. Currently, I'm doing my final year in my degree in mass communications. Thank you girls for being here today. No problem. Thank you for having us. So is this the first time you come to church? Yeah, ever since like the MCO started, it's my first time. <laughs> wow, what was it like driving in church? Um, you know, when we come in from the junction, usually we turn in and like when I drove in, I was just like, man, <laughs> kind of <laughs> miss this feeling actually. Yeah, I know, I know. Yeah. And for Zian, it's not your first time. No, here, this is right? not my first time. I, I came last week around there. Yeah. Before this whole MCO pandemic, you girls uh, were serving very... Uh, frequently in church, right? Yeah. yeah. You miss it? Yeah, because after classes, like on weekdays, then we come sat like Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and then it's like, it's like every week kind of thing. And suddenly now it's just like, there are no more days. This just a day. <laughs> every day is just a day. So it's, yeah. it's kind of like a different, a little bit empty. La. Yeah. You, know, you feel empty. Yeah. Our, our weekends are never the same. Because usually like, what's the that We usually are here Saturday, Sunday. Two yeah. days in church until maybe like four o'clock or four. If we have uh, youth meetings, then they'll be like until six o'clock. Yeah. So like now that we don't have that, we're like, uh, what are we going to do on Saturday? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You both are also uh, studying online still. How oh, has your yeah. whole MCO studying experience <laughs> been? Uh, it's been very different because like usually we have like in face to face we have like um fixed time fixed schedule and stuff so for my uni we our lecturers decided that to record most of our lectures so they'll just upload at a certain time of the week and then we just watch it at our in that in some sense at our liking lah. so i've been doing that and it's it kind of really messed up my whole schedule, like my whole life schedule. Well, I can imagine that yeah. will require a high level of discipline yeah, yeah, to definitely. even access. Um, but I think on the on the advantage is that mine doesn't require like I don't need to know understand like the whole syllabus because it's more assignment based. So mm. uh, I just mostly refer to what I need. Yeah. I see. So. How about you, yeah. Zian? For me, um, I still ha we have online classes. We have a. Uh, my uni has a platform where we have all this, uh, where we have where we pass up assignments. We have the material for our courses, where lecturers yeah lecturers will upload those materials, and also mm. we have this uh, platform for us to do online classes, because mm. uh, yeah. And so for now, I'm doing. I've just started my semester like last week, mm -hmm. so like now I'm doing online classes, and we follow a timetable. So like I have classes, uh, three days a week. Wow. Okay. Yeah. And. 
mm, the lec- yeah, we actually like interact with the lecturer like it's like a classroom setting but it's online, online yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, so it's a bit different. So which one would you prefer? I mean, you are going through a very different online study um, methods, right? I think to the next that I kind of like mine um because I'm not a very fixed person, so I'm more of a like a okay, You like the flexibility. Yes, now now I can have time to sit down and uh go through like my syllabus and mm. if that week I don't need sometimes I won't even like refer to it because a lot of my assessment is mostly research, so mm. I need the internet more than I need my syllabus in some sense. Wow. Okay. Okay. I see. Okay. You're both final year students, right? Yeah. 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 So this has affected your year a great deal. Yeah. Too great a deal, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Can you share a bit what was your initial thought coming to twenty twenty and and especially when this happened and uh, with the universities announcing that there mm. is no classes through the yeah. both yeah. Anna- university announced there are yeah. no classes or are there exceptions? Uh so far we haven't I haven't received yeah. any we are following updated yeah. as uh, of after the government announced. Yes. So we are still waiting. Still waiting, I yeah, see. Yeah, just government announced and we just out. But yeah, most so probably it's online, I think. Yeah. So can you share a little bit about how how it's like uh knowing that this is your final year and what were your hopes and then you know <laughs> with all this um so for me i was really looking forward to spending my last year in on campus because i i stay on campus and i'm quite used to the campus life the clubs like cf and I, i'm very involved in my uh in my cf my uni cf and of course we have at night it's a night life i'm telling you about ca- uh, that I really, really miss the most because we have we go out for like suppers, we go for fellowship and everything. So yeah, I, I was really looking forward to doing that. And actually, this is the year that I honestly felt like I actually managed to really settle into my uni. And then, <laughs> and then this happened, and I'm like, okay, mm. I'm not gonna <laughs> have that. Mm. So yeah, that that's. I feel like it's been like ripped away from me. So it it is a very Sad feeling. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for sharing so openly, though. <laughs> yeah, I think it's about the same for me as well. Cause like I also live on campus, and uh, a big part of my life is actually in university itself and mm. in my residence. And I have a couple of close friends mm. whom we kind of spe- spend every day with for the past three years. So like the sudden, um, as in the sudden like uh, separation, yeah, and yeah. it creates a kind of it, it's a different. It's really adjusting to a different life. Because I've never been like at home for a long period of time <laughs> in so long. Like, <laughs> you know, like um, Manesh being in uni is, is like a big part of my life. Right. So like adjusting to that and like really just, it's, it's really just a sudden hit of realisation yeah. that, okay, we might not be, that, that might not be our life anymore, you know, yeah. and without like time to prepare for it la, and mm. stuff like that. So it's, it, it is, um, to a certain extent, kind of a big deal in our context, like for from where we're looking at it. So it's, it's sad, I guess. Yeah, sad, it is, yeah. and especially cause like, my, you do you have international friends in your yeah, uni? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I miss hanging out with like, I miss the fellowship mm. lah. Especially yeah. cause even here, even though we have, we can hang out with our Suramban friends. Um, it's different, but it's different. It's, it's according, different according thing, yeah, it's yeah. different yeah. because in uni you, you, it's the international <laughs> friends I miss the most from yeah. uni to be honest. So mm. are your friends all still on campus? I mean, those that cannot go home. Do they have to stay in the last three months? Uh, well, I had a friend. Sh- actually, she was stuck. She didn't manage to get back um, in time because she s- lives uh, on, on the other side of Malaysia, right? So she was stuck for quite about two and a half months before wow. the last phase where they finally allow students to go back. So, wow. But the rest of us managed to leave before the whole thing started. Right, but your international friends, yeah. did yeah, they go back? No, my international friends are still, still there. Mm, I see. Some have gone back, but... Um, the ones I know from CF, the ones I'm closer to, they're still there. I mm. see, I see. Then looking forward now with the RMO movement, uh, but even though classes are not able to take place physically mm. yet until further notice, what are your plans or hopes looking forward? Um, of course, there's a small part of us, I think, for both of us, that we hope that our uni will yeah. at least open. La. Not even, you don't even need to have classes, but just leave the campus open for us to access because it's I think it's very different studying at home yeah like, <laughs> like although you have can have the best environment at home but it's just different yeah. um, a different atmosphere and Definite, like uh, yeah. I would 
I guess we would very much prefer to study on campus. But we know that my, like the government already announced to, to like, this is what this kind of students can go, that kind of students can go. So I don't think we actually yeah, fall into... We, we don't fall into that, that kind of category. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, but the thing, but the sad thing about it is even if we are allowed to go back, it's not, it's not the same anymore. It's yeah. not the same. Yeah, it's correct. the new normal like what Pastor mentioned yeah. also. It's, it's really like you can't have gatherings, you can't mm. go out for supper, you can't, maybe we might have curfew or something. Yeah. So it's more restricted and it's not, for me, it's not an ideal way to... Mm. Yeah, okay. to yeah, spend yeah, my yeah. last Understand. year on campus. So, mm. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it's 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 very sad that things are not going to be the same for mm. a while. Mm. So even if we are able to go back to campus uh, in August or what, it's it's still going to be different. Right. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. How are you managing with that feeling, <laughs> that disappointment? Um, I think at first it was quite quite hard like um the first two weeks and you're just sitting there in your room and you're just like I okay know, man right? that was the end of it you know? I know right like, because when you come out from something not expecting not to return to it mm. I think that kind of feeling and it's it's like you have so much so much expectations that everyone who have graduated at a certain point of time have, would have felt that their final year was like you know the best, best day yeah exactly you know that it's yeah. supposed to be that way but mm. like for us it's like your best leave is in your room you know <laughs> so it's kind of like <laughs> Yeah, so it's it was a bit hard lah, but uh, you just you just gotta deal with it. Like it's it's just yeah. Yeah, for me, I was honestly quite devastated when I heard it, and of course, like we mentioned, like I was we were looking forward to spending time. I was looking forward to spending time on my campus and all, and I was very 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 sad and also I was very lost because I don't know what to do next. Like I was looking forward to this, then suddenly it's mm. gone. Then you're like. Um, so what am I going to do? Yeah. So, but um, honestly speaking, for me, it has gotten, it, it's getting better as the mm. days passed. So, that's I, good. Yeah, I, I'm happy that it is getting better. And I'm, I think once I started to accept the fact that, yeah. you know, I'm not going yeah, to yeah, be yeah, able yeah. to yeah, go back to campus. Yes. And like, okay, this is a fact. You don't go and hope like <laughs> yeah. you might go back to campus this year. Like, yeah. no way. So like, once you accept the fact and... You know, we have to accept the fact and maybe yeah. like cry or grieve it, over it, it, it for fact, a while. It's a fact, you know, it's, it's not a hypothesis, it's a fact. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, it helped a lot la, to accept the fact and be like, okay, mm. so this is this is thing is happening now, so how am I going to deal with it mm. in this situation? Yeah. Oh. That's good to know. Thank you for sharing that so honestly. <laughs> I, think I, I think that there are others who are also going yeah. through this yeah. and hearing, hearing it from you will help them as well to move on in this. Mm. So are there any uh, new hopes and dreams that you may ha- might have developed over this time? Um, you want to go first? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm honestly still trying to figure it out. Yeah. Yeah. Are, are you mm. still trying to figure it out too? Um, or? I think to a certain extent, I have like a rough goal of where I want to be after this. Mm-hmm. Although like with the whole thing, new norm and maybe not being able to be employed for a bit <laughs> after we graduate. <laughs> but I think um, it has given, this period of time has really given me time to uh, think about what I really want in life. Because I generally, I'm a very all over person. I, ca- I can have this, I can have that. I can think about a lot of things, but like I really needed to sit down and really think, okay, so what if all these are not there anymore? You know, yeah. what's next? You know, what's what's the core of it? You know, where where are we going after this? Yeah. So it gave me a lot of time to, like, this spirit gave me a lot of time to just think about what I what what's really in me, what I really want to do next. You know, what what has got got next for me, kind of thing. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Wow, that's amazing. So you actually have time during this entire yeah. MCO sitting yeah. at home to realign mm. your life, yeah, so to speak, and figure out what is really important for you. Yeah, to and that. And you have been able to do so. Yeah. That's, That's good. wonderful. That's wonderful. Yeah. I think it's tough, like, initially to accept, to um, go through that uh, initial process of reflection to, okay, okay, you know, there's no more, like, um, the other things to uh, block out already, you know, to distract, mm-hmm. you know, to mm-hmm. every week you go about different things, but it's just you and you now kind of thing, mm, you yeah. and God. And it's like, I have no choice, but I need to do it, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So. 
is it is a very good time to sit down and literally think about your life. Yeah. Yeah, that's wonderful. Is there anything you want to share? Um, for me, I'm literally just figuring out like mm. what to do next and mm. uh, planning like more hopes and dreams. Uh, okay, I wouldn't say planning more hopes and dreams, <laughs> but more like planning out your hopes and dreams. <laughs> 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 no, yeah, it's to discover what I want next, lah. Yeah. Right, right. And either way, I think there's no right or wrong either. Everyone is on a different journey. Yeah. So whether people have been successful or not successful or lost or, or very focused, I think these are all just part of a journey. Yeah, and it's definitely. great that we can hear and see different types of journey and recognize that it's, it's still part of the journey. Yeah. It right. is, it is. Well, Were there anything else that you actually uh, explored or discovered during this time or learned new skills? <laughs> anything? <laughs> Learn Cooking new skills. Dalgona anywhere? Uh, no, no. no. <laughs> Or TikTok? <laughs> <laughs> no. No. Uh, cooking? No, definitely not. Still my can't cup cook. of tea. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I can fry an egg much better. <laughs> hey, you can make waffles, right? Didn't you make waffles or something? Waffles is just the waffles machine. Like you just literally you put need to make the. You still need to make the batter, right? Yeah. Okay, but that's like follow like recipe. Literally, literally, literally tells you how many tablespoons of this and how many eggs. You also did like French toast also before it. Right? Okay, yeah, okay. I mean, <laughs> if, if these are achievements, then yes, I can make all this. <laughs> which is, yes. Yeah. Yeah. But other than that, um, oh. for me, I've... <laughs> my mom, like, she's been starting to bake a lot of bread and make a lot of um, pastry. I wouldn't say dairy pastry, but like... bread. <laughs> yeah, dairy free bread. Like breads or food. Like, I have started to be... Um, I'm learning how to be more... Natural in the kitchen, uh-huh. although <laughs> <laughs> I don't, although like although I still like can't, but I'm learning to you know I'm not so scared of the kitchen anymore. I'll just put it that way. I'm not so scared of the kitchen anymore. Oh, that's good. That's <laughs> a, that's an achievement. Yes. Yeah, mostly like bread and I've made like spaghetti uh, with guidance from Auntie Rachel. Mm. Uh, one more thing I've been doing. Uh, two more things really. One more thing is been going to the spiritual side. Been trying to do devotion more. And mm. also, uh, it's also w- at the start of MCL, I wanted to focus more on because for me, I I like to write. Okay, I say honestly, I s- I say I like to write, but honestly, I haven't been practicing much. But mm. I've heard feedback that m- I'm good at writing. Yeah. So I want to like develop on that yeah, more yeah, as well. Yeah, wow, that's amazing for my future career. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. You should. You should. We will support you in that. Yeah. Yes. yes. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> natural in the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> a little more natural in the kitchen. So Sue, anything on your side? Um, I guess also like uh, one of the main things is more of doing like devotion lah. Because mm-hmm. I think like I mentioned earlier, there is no running away. Like main bulk of what I talked about earlier is really about that. You know, there is no running away. Um, when there's no more church, you know how we talk about we we love like like serving and we come every week and it's just such a big chunk of our life that we think okay you know like that's so important but when that's taken away Mm. and you realize that you know maybe that wasn't that Mm. wasn't like so important after all you know like it's Mm. it's a part of it but like the main part of it still comes from when you are alone you know with god so it's a lot of um going deeper with in the in that sense in the area of life where there's no more spectators there's no one telling you what to do but it's up to you to like take charge of your life yeah. and your spiritual personal work. responsibility yeah, of our yeah. work with a God. lot of that yes, mm, yes. Mm. that's amazing yeah. now thank you once again for being here and sharing all this with no, us no problem we wish you the best in thank your you final year us. online <laughs> 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 thank you thank you you know the last time I preached I mentioned that this pandemic has really come at a point in our lives so suddenly and really changed everything, changed our lives completely. And I just want to take a little bit of time right now to talk about that and how that has affected us. I, I also mentioned at that time that I felt personally that it was like something had been robbed from me, something that we ha- I had aspired, something that I put in place And it's just been taken away without permission, without thinking about it, without preparing for it. And it's just gone. You know, 
those who grow up with me and you've gone through life, you would know that sudden changes uh, are a great challenge to me. If you make a sudden change to my plans, it would really mess me up and I normally can't follow. Uh, I used to have friends who just tell me, hey, next tomorrow, let's go somewhere. And, I, and it will usually be uh, quite a trigger point because I would not be able to change my plans so suddenly. And it was a tough time for me to deal back then and it is still a tough time for me to deal today. However, I believe that I have improved in many ways and have become a bit more flexible, a little less frustrated. However, this inability has truly affected my life a great deal. And it is the thought that all these ideals, all these plans and all these dreams I've built up in my head, I've planned up inside me, uh, needs to be changed or goes away. It's still there. And in these unprecedented times, there's um, been some frustration too. There's been some unease. And I don't know how many of you might feel the same. I don't know how many of you uh, shared the same uh, disappointment as Sui and Zian, Zian had shared previously about um, dreams or thoughts or plans being disrupted and had caused sadness and perhaps disappointments that the year is gone or taken from us. Perhaps there are some feelings of deep loss and even grief because we need to let go of certain dreams or desires that were very, very dear to us or very special in some sense. Big moments in life. You know, grief can be felt with the loss of people or things or even just plans and hopes. Maybe there are some feelings of frustrations and anger even at the changes that we don't want never wanted, don't welcome, yet they are here. I think it's important that we truly not just deal with it, but to allow ourselves to feel. You see, we are all human beings and we are created with emotions. And instead of trying to sweep it under the carpet or try to rationalize or try to make positive, keep it away or you know tell ourselves oh no because i'm a christian i shouldn't think such things the truth is we were created with emotions we were created with all ranges of emotions and we should learn to embrace each and every one of it we should learn to feel every of these emotions all the emotions that make us feel good and the emotions that make us feel lousy because the truth is all these range, ranges of emotions are part of who we are, part of the human experience. I just want to propose and share with you three things that we can do at this point. If you share these same feelings as myself, or if you share this same loss of hope and disappointments, just as Sui as Zian has shared. And I don't want to presume I know what you are going through or the greatness of your loss. It could even have been a loss of someone dear. But I just want to propose three things we can do. The first thing is to admit. Admit that we are feeling this way. Allow ourselves to feel it. Give ourselves that space and that time to moan. Moan for the loss, moan for the pain. Tell our family members and friends if we have to, I need space. I need a good cry, if you will. I need time to feel, to really feel that emotion. Because it's very hard to move on if we deny ourselves of being able to feel and admit the reality of that in our life. We need to learn to admit it to ourselves, to allow ourselves to realize that within ourselves, admit to ourselves, and admit to someone else, someone you trust, to be able to share that to somebody else. 
I think it's very important that as we verbalize, we verbalize and confess it, it becomes even more real to us. It becomes a lot more alive. So I think it's important, firstly, that we admit. Allow yourself a good cry. Allow yourself to feel lousy. Admit it. I'm feeling sad. I'm feeling disappointed. I'm angry. And just feel it. Firstly. Secondly, to commit. We need to learn to take all these disappointments and sadness, take all it, all of it up, and commit it. Release it to God. Trust that the God that we love and the God that we serve is more than able to take up all those broken pieces and make something beautiful. All that emotion, all that plan, that we learn to bring it before our God, bring it before the cross, and lay it there and release it to Him. Let Him take it. Trust God not just in the good times, but trust Him in the pain as well. Trust Him that He will take it gently, He will be careful, and He will be considerate of how we feel, and He will build something better. That hope is never lost because our God is a God of hope. He always makes something new. He always brings life and He can always turn anything for His good, for our good. Secondly is to commit. Learn to bring it before God and release it. Admit, commit, and last but not least, move on. Zian mentioned something earlier and she said that when she learned to accept this as a fact and adjust what to look forward to, she was able to cope. And adjusting our expectation is very important. Accepting a fact of what's happening and adjusting what to look forward to. Adjust our expectation, build new plans, you know, create new plans and new dreams and build new hopes and begin to look forward to that hope to plan towards what we can. Adjust what you cannot do, what you can do. Adjust our hopes and dreams. And start taking steps towards that. New hope, new plan. Start taking baby steps, if you will. It doesn't matter how small that step is. It could be just as small as clearing up your desk, making a list, making one phone call. Any small step. And we begin to move towards that new dream. So firstly, admit. Secondly, commit. Thirdly, move on. Adjust our expectation and take steps towards moving on. You know, we're going to take time right now that we do this together. We want to take all our feelings and disappointments and emotions and really commit it to God at this time. And I hope that I can have the privilege right now to pray with you as we release it to God. So let's just do that two things right now. Firstly, let us acknowledge those feelings. This is a very individual thing. It's a very personal thing as well. So wherever you are in your room or wherever you're listening to this, take time right now Let's just make space for each other and be sensitive to people around you if you have family members around you to find your own spot. And let's just do that together. To just say, yeah, I admit I'm feeling quite sad. I'm feeling a bit hurt. I'm feeling really disappointed. I feel angry. I feel lousy. I feel lost. Let's just acknowledge those feelings and acknowledge that we, in our family members and our friends, each other, have feelings. And it is okay to feel those things. Let's not force our loved ones or people around us to just cancel their feelings and move on. But let us learn to acknowledge those feelings about each other. Yes, it is okay to feel lousy or lost 
or hurt. Secondly, we want to be able to pray. And I just want to take a bit of time right now to pray for those of you who might be experiencing deep sense of loss or disappointment or even grief. Again, I don't want to presume or or I may not know what you are going through but we want to acknowledge that they are real to you and we want to learn to pray about it and commit it to God. So let's do that right now. God, I just pray for everyone who's tuning in and we pray for all who may feel disappointed or even sad or even a sense of loss for what has been taken from us. Lord, we know that it was not, it's not something that anyone planned for. But we want to trust that you are still God. And Lord, we pray you take these emotions of hurt, take these broken dreams, gather them up, Lord, and you take it unto yourself. And we want to release it to you right now. We want to lay down those broken dreams and those broken plans so that you can take it and we will not pick it up again. Pray you take these emotions, O God, and you help us find healing. Help us reconcile with ourselves. Help us reconcile with our future and what you have in plan, in store. We thank you that you are a good God and you still bring hope. You still bring joy. In Jesus' most wonderful name, thank you for your love and your care. Amen. One last thing. I want to encourage you, even as we have prayed and released it to God, that you verbalize these feelings and pains to someone you trust. Find someone you know, someone you trust and talk to them about it. Just share all those feelings, you know. Someone who will not pass that message on but is able to anchor whatever that you have said to the ground and not repeat it ever again. We just you know, find someone who can help share that same load because there's something about verbalizing and confessing to someone that helps us really move on. And if you are that someone that, ha- that is listening, you are that friend who has been called upon to listen, I also want to say this. Be empathetic. Listen. Don't judge. Don't try to offer a billion and one advice or action plans. Learn to hear the heart and the feelings behind it. Hold your hands. Pray with them. And step by step, we will move on together. We are a community. We are here for each other. And I pray only the best for you right now. Alright, that's the end of the first of our three-week series. Hope that the message has been a blessing to you. Now, some announcement. This coming Sunday, Pastor Ben will be addressing the whole church and there will be exciting new updates and developments. So we encourage all of you to join us for Sunday service this Sunday. And don't just join alone. Tag your friends and just get everyone in your connect group together because Pastor Ben will be updating all of us on what are the new developments that will be taking place from this Sunday onwards. So do stay tuned for that. And with that said, we also, are from the survey, we find out that a lot of you are very interested in joining different online seminars and also Bible study. And do stay tuned uh, with all our social media and our promotion because we will be announcing uh, when you can sign up and join us for the rest of the year. So for that, do remember to stay tuned. Last but not least is this. We are still looking for people who, is, who are willing to join our COVID-19 Relief Task Force where we are forming a team that will assess every situation and based on the various needs in our community that will provide 
assistance to them. And for this, we want to encourage all of you, if you have a hard time and you're willing to join us, do join us for we believe that together we can make a difference. All right? So see you again. Thank you and God bless.